All right, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises and glory belongs to my Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Kadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai, who we reverence. And you got to keep saying that name because the demons out there, they don't like when you say that name. The devil doesn't like when you say that name. And through faith, that's how we're going to make it through. Through your faith in Yahweh Shai. Does this mean we don't keep the laws? No. You've got, you got to be a complete idiot. Excuse my language. You've got to be a complete imbecile. Obviously, there's a balance. You know, and you've got a lot of devils out here. Okay. And that's why Yahweh Shai said in John 8 and 44, Ye of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer and he was a liar from the beginning. There is no truth in him. Our people lie. Our people make stuff up. That's why they have to go. They don't have Yahweh dwelling in them. The Pharisees, they knew the laws. They were brilliant with the laws. But they did not have one thing and that was faith. So again, you can know all the laws but have no faith. And if you have faith, you, you, if you have faith you're going to keep the laws. And if you have faith, Yahweh is going to give you what the spirit to make the right decisions. The Holy Spirit is what, what guides you. Do the laws guide you in wrong and right decisions? Yes. But when you've got the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to guide you to make the right decisions. Most of the time. Because it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit ain't going to guide you in a way of error. Okay. If you're just leaning on the law... You could be what? And and you're not keeping it. You're in the ways of error. You're, you're in the ways of death. This is what our people don't understand because they're carnal. They're worldly. They don't understand. You have a show. They don't understand his sacrifice. All right. I don't know. Maybe you're still a Christian. All right. Let's go to Matthew 23 and 23. And this lesson is really going to be based on a bed. Okay. Keeping a bed on your face. Okay, without lining it up and without lining up your hair. Easy. These are the this is an easy one of the one of the most easy commandments. So I want to start with Matthew 23 and 3. All therefore what's whatsoever they bid you tell you to do. Okay. All, whatsoever they bid you, observe. Okay, so what do we observe? We observe the high holy days. Okay, we practice it, we rehearse it, that observe and do, so we observe and we do it. Okay, because the laws are not grievous. You being a spiritual man, you're going to know the laws are not grievous. But you also being a spiritual man, you're going to know that, yeah, you need the law. Alright, you, you need the law, because how do you know when you're doing wrong? How do you know what's wrong, what's right? And that's what the law is for. Because what's right, what's wrong. Alright. But do not after their works. For they say and do not. So that, that was made clear. Do not after their works. Because they say and do not. They were not doing. Okay. They were telling you to do stuff. and They weren't doing it. They weren't practicing it themselves. They were actors. They were holding everybody to the same standard. To a standard that they were not upholding themselves. They were phony. They were fake. And they never really had faith in Yahweh Shai. And any man that tells you. Yes. Stop calling on that name Yahweh Shai. That's a devil. That's a demon. Alright. And what does the word devil mean? Deceiver. You've got a lot of deceivers. You've got a lot of devils out here. Alright. And when you go into the word devil. It says colonimator. One who acts on part of the devil. Esau, you got a lot of people. They're already tag teaming with Esau. They already got their mind in this kingdom. All right, that's why you're gonna be circumspect in these times. So now we're gonna go straight to one of the easiest laws that men can't even keep. All right, one of the easiest laws. And guess what? In none of my videos can you will you see me saying you don't have to keep the law. Not one video can you uh, find me saying you don't have to keep the law. Okay. So if anybody said I've said that, 
Guess what? They're the devil. Alright? Luke 19. Got a lot of deceivers in this truth, but that's alright. Yahweh has gone what? Get you out of there very soon. Luke 20 and 27. You shall not round the corners of your heads. So when you're rounding the corner of your head, you're shaving it off completely. Completely. You can have a fate, but there still has to be some hair there. If you have a fate where it's completely no hair there, that's rounding the corners of your heads. Alright? There's nothing there. Why? Because the Canaanites, they had that train tri tri that same tradition. Okay? Neither shall I mar the corners of your bed. What does mar mean? When you go into that word mar, you know it means destroy. So when you're marring your bed, you're destroying it. You're destroying it. You're cutting it. Okay, you're diminishing it. You're spoiling it. You're scarring it. You're disfiguring it. You're defacing it. Just like this image right here. This guy looks... <laughs> he looks soft. And why do most people do that to impress the women or for their workplace because they, what, they want to conform to this society? That's why I'm talking about certain guys, they're just worldly. So the men of the truth, they're not going to have a look like this. This is a look of the world. This is an example of marring your bed, destroying it, lining it up. Alright? The scriptures don't tell us to do that. Can you can you um cut it down? Yes, you can shorten it. But if you're lining it up, guess what? You've just broken the law. That's why I don't push that spirit. Oh the law, the law, the law. I don't push that spirit. The scriptures, you keep the law to the best of your abilities, the ones you can keep, and this is one of the most easiest. Just don't touch your bed. Just don't touch it. What's so hard to do that? And that's how you know a lot of men are full of shit. That's why Yahushua says, don't do it, uh, observe what they say, but don't do as they do. Because they're not doing it themselves. A lot of them do it for their women as well, because their women tell them, oh, you know, I don't like it. It looks too rough. So what? So now, now, now you're going to follow your woman. Your woman tells you to take the trip. You're going to take it. You simp. Simp. That's why these laws are in here. Alright. And as an example of let's go straight to it. Bear me just a minute. Let's go straight to Samuel. And there's different reasons for having what a beard on your face. Okay, firstly, it's, it's a badge of man, manliness. Okay. And also, bear me just a minute. See, there's more. There's more. Bear me just a minute. There's more. Leviticus 21 and 5. There's more. Bear me just a minute. They, they shall not make bonus upon their head. You even got men that are teaching all about the law, but they got bonus upon their heads. You could be naturally bought. Bought. But it's still a bit of hair there, and you've got men that are putting a razor to that. Well, that's that's you breaking the law. Neither should they shave off the corner of their bed. So you're shaving it up, shaving it off. Okay, nor make any cuttings in their flesh, tattoos. And some of some of you brothers may have had tattoos before you came into the truth. Well, obviously that was done in ignorance. You never knew any better, did you? That was done in ignorance. Well, when you come into truth, if you're still doing these things, then obviously you're you're a reprobate. So I want to go into 2 Samuel 10 and 4. Straight away, man. That's why you got to be careful in these times. There's a lot of deceivers, man. Men can tell you about all this other stuff, but when it comes to your Havashai, it goes at, goes at the window. And if you have the Holy Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit's going to guide you on what to do. When all hell breaks loose, is, 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 is it going to be the, the laws that guide you? It's going to be the Holy Spirit that guides you. Through what? Through your faith. Does that mean we make void the law? No, we still establish the law. Because what right now? What? We're in a rehearsal. Okay? 
Read the scriptures about the scriptures where it talks about walking in the spirit. What spirit is that? The Holy Spirit. So if you're walking in the Holy Spirit, you're doing the things that are according to the law. You're doing the things that are pleasing to Yahweh Shai. What's so hard to understand? Unless you're a reprobate, unless you're carnal. Same spirit them Pharisees had. Bear me just a minute. The wicked Pharisees. Nobody's, nobody's saying we, we, you don't keep the law. Don't get it twisted. When you're listening to my videos, don't get it twisted. What I'm trying to say is, if you were trying to uphold all these laws, which you, can't, which you cannot keep, then when you would go off, what would be the... Um, what would be what would be what would be um the makeup of that? It would be you have a share. In no way am I saying do what you want. I'm not saying that. And for me, even to have to explain that to a man over and over again, it shows this man is carnal. A lot of men jump to conclusions because they don't listen to to the whole matter first. The scripture says, examine first, then rebuke. A lot of men are not listening. The law is not for the righteous man because the righteous man is already rehearsing the law. He's already doing the things that pertain to the law. And he's righteous. Why? Because he has faith. The law was made for the sinner. The one that's going off. The one that doesn't know what to do. If you can't figure that, that out, then I don't know what to tell you. Let's go to Samuels. You've got men out here. You've got men out here that are teaching for envy and strife. Okay. The Lord's going to get you out of there very soon. Let's go to 2 Samuel 10 and 4. And that's really, it's indicative of your spirit. You can only teach for, for envy and strife. That's indicative of your spirit. Or backtrack what another man's um, doing. You're going to be found out very soon. Let's go to 2 Samuel 10 and 4. Go straight to it. This is 2 Samuel 10 and start at 2. Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanan. Okay. The son of Nahash as his father showed kindness unto me because his father passed away. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of his servant for his father. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. Okay, which are the so-called what? Japanese that we know as Japanese today. And the prince of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan. Where Lord thinketh thou that David doth honour thy father that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Have not rather David rather sent his servants unto thee? So the servants, the, the servants, the protectors of the king's son, they were gassing up his and saying, nah, they, they they come to do something else. They ain't came to comfort you, they've come to do something else. And to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it. Wherefore Hanan took David's servants and shaped off one half of their beards. Okay. And cut off their garments. Alright. In the middle. Even to their buttocks. And sent them away. And that was very shameful. When they told it unto David. He sent to meet them. Because the men were greatly ashamed. Greatly. Alright. And the king said. Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown. And then return. So you notice a key word that King David said. Tarry therefore at Jericho until your beards be grown. Because it was a shame not to have a beard. But to have one, 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 one part of your beard cut off. It was a shame. Because beard is also what a manly custom. You look like a lion when you got beard. You don't have a beard. You look soft. Look feminine. You look weak. Okay, I'm not saying, oh, you have a bed. Ultimately, you're a man. You're no, 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 I'm not saying that. But it's a badge of what? Manly dignity. Okay, that's why it was a shame. That's why David said, tarry here until your beds be grown back. Then you go back out. <laughs> okay. So what? Is it so hard to keep a bed on your face? Is it so hard? Oh no, my, my manager. I need to, well, that means, guess what? If, if you're folding at something like that, what makes you think you're not going to fold when you're told to take the vax or the r 5 chip? Stop with the hypocrisy. Stop with the hypocrisy. Alright? 
So with this system, I'll shut off here. And until the next time, shut up one.